was really concerned what Ben's motivation was. I mean, is he wanting the treasure because he wants that money, wants that cash? Or is he more of a historian who wants to restore history to the world? Here's to the men who did what was considered wrong in order to do what they knew was right. He makes a character in his mind and he just brings so much more to what is actually written in the script. Treasure is a myth. I refuse to believe that. What am I doing? Do what you want. Do what you want. Nick is a very, very playful guy. He is really playful and he likes to have that silliness to keep his creative energy up. Do what you want. Nick is a very, very playful guy. He is really playful and he likes to have that silliness to keep his creative energy up. Wow. He has a certain kind of volume control where he literally can turn up his performance to a point where he just goes for it. He just goes for it. for that DC car chase. We're dealing with the catering truck, which doesn't go that fast. So we had to make something exciting without making it your traditional chase. You move, that's it. And then it, and then it, and then it. That's it. Yeah, we got tossed around quite a lot in the catering truck. We're going over bumps. Shocking. Incredible speed. Positively yeah. shocking. Quite interesting with pots and pans falling on the head. Grab on for your life. Okay. Hang on and swing. Diane did some incredible stunt work herself, even though the more dangerous stuff was done by a stunt person. Most of the stuff where you see her in the film is really her swinging on the back of the truck and jumping from one truck to another, so I thought she was a real trooper. Those days were like the hardest. I had to go on a vacation afterwards for a week. I felt, I mean, so sore. Oh no. I mean, so sore. Diane did some incredible stunt work herself. He'd been jumping from one truck to another, so I thought she was a real trooper. We had two huge decisions in production design how to make things that don't exist look like they exist, and how to recreate the secret catacombs underneath Trinity Church. So we did an enormous amount of research. We visited many Mason's temples. And they told us about their symbols and their rituals, what the unseen eye did, what a certain type of cross did, and so on. It's very complex. What the unseen eye did, what a certain type of cross did, and so on. It's very complex. And we incorporated that. So that automatically gave us a logic, and it's very complex. 
And these would be our catacombs. Remembering in our story, this has been hidden from the public for about 300 years. But we talked about how long it should be. Should it be a straight catacomb or do we come around the corner slightly so it starts to reveal itself? Ben and Abigail and the gang would actually come down the shaft in elevators, which you can see being operated there. It all works on hydraulics and counterweights. Our job at Asylum was to make the shaft look as large, large and, and scary, scary and scary and, a, and as realistic as possible. We had to combine our 3D model with the live action environment of the shaft. Three, two, one, go! It's a big set, but it's not bottomless like it was supposed to be, so we had to extend the set even further. You want to see that it's very deep, and yet it has to be believable as a structure that's made from board. Asylum got involved with National Treasure due to the relationship we've had with Jerry Bruckheimer and with Disney for the past five years. In the film, we worked on probably around 350 shots. We talked a lot about the opening sequence of the film. In that sequence, we had some ocean footage scenes where we had to do a lot of atmospherics and obviously a CG ship. One of our biggest challenges was completely animating the sequence, which shows how the Declaration of Independence is kept safe. We did lots of layering effects for the film, a lot of compositing, and we even added water to the pool in front of the Washington Monument. The interesting part about the treasure room are the fire troughs. When Ben dips his torch into the oil, lighting the troughs, the treasure room miniature was shot one-sixth scale, and the fire troughs were shot full scale. These shots were particularly challenging just because of the number of elements involved, somewhere between 100 and 200 elements that build up. So here's the original blue screen shot. We take the various versions of the miniature footage, we place fire and smoke in there, we end up manipulating some of the treasure, adding more treasure here and there, and also we can build camera moves into that to help match the camera move of the foreground element where the people are on the blue screen. What John Turtletaub was looking for was an ooh-ah reaction from the audience when Ben lights those fire troughs and the room finally gets lit up and you see the treasure. And I think it really works well in the movie. It's a fantasy, but at the same time, it's taken us to all these wonderful places that are part of American history. Treasure hunting is a big deal still today. Getting into all that was fantastic. What's really interesting is that this is in our backyard. And there were these treasures that were hidden away and have been lost for generations and generations. So they're out there. It's got to find them. Subscribe!